When I was a wee little boy growing up in early 19th century orphanage in Ireland, the news of the sinking of the Titanic was shocking and sad. Shocking because I had hoped to take the Titanic to America someday. This is a terrible Irish accent, I apologize. And sad because this great piece of machinery that man had made to conquer the vast, deadly ocean had been split by an iceberg, like a switchblade to the neck. Titanic had been defeated on its maiden voyage. It took only 20 years for us to make a ship that was larger. Will we keep making such mistakes? Tucson Studios in Arizona. This is the One Minute History Podcast. Here's your host, the hardest working man on the internet, Casanaya. The Titanic was designed to be unsinkable. Thick hull, watertight compartments, electronic watertight doors. The boat didn't have a double hull, just a double bottom. So when the glacier sheared away at the side of the ship, above the double hull, water began to pour into the interior. As water does, it infected every space. Just imagine this moment. You were on the largest ship in the world. Then that crash. It echoes through the structure. It's a death call. Then the water comes rushing. There was not enough lifeboats for the people aboard. The boats were considered wasted space. 1,500 people died. When the James Cameron film Titanic was being advertised. The film trailers showed a tragic romance or a political movie about class structure. But the most intriguing trailer was the most terrifying. It presented itself as a water apocalypse movie. It was only until a minute in that you realized the movie was Titanic. Titanic, the film, was the first to make a billion dollars. It has been surpassed only by the other big James Cameron film, Avatar. Titanic, the film, has become part of the Titanic story. Don't you understand? The water is freezing and there aren't enough boats. Half the people on the ship are going to die. Not the better half. A hundred years later, we look romantically on that horrible tragedy without having to worry about what caused the Titanic to sink in the first place. What does give me faith in the idea that we as human beings try to correct our bitter mistakes is the huge investigation that followed the sinking of the Titanic. Every survivor gave a testimonial for the United States Senate investigation on the disaster. 100 years later, it was a combination of these testimonials that led to an investigator to finally put the puzzle pieces together, the true cause of why the ship had been so taken by surprise by a massive iceberg. Iceberg, get ahead! Iceberg, get ahead, sir! There was a fantastic Smithsonian Channel documentary now streaming on Netflix called Titanic's Final Mystery, about the author Tim Malton's investigation. An investigator is determined to re-examine all the evidence. So she's at Titanic's okay. worksite. That's incredible. The more I read about the truth of what happened, the more I realize how strange it really was. I won't spoil the ending. It's just too good of a documentary not to watch. So 
go watch it. For a hundred years, we've wondered why. And how did the tragedy happen in the first place? Who or what was to blame? The Titanic was a massive ship when it was built. The first 1,000 gross ton ship was the Syracusia, designed by Archimedes in 240 BC. It wasn't until the 15th century that the Chinese Ming Dynasty, Admiral Zheng He's treasure ships, which sailed as far as East Africa, that ships reached the size of 2,000 tons. Metal ships gave the ability of the ships to be much larger. In 1906, the RMS Lusitania was 32,000 tons. The Titanic in 1912 was a behemoth 46,000 tons. That ship ended up at the bottom of the ocean. It took only 20 years to build a larger ship. In 1935, the SS Normandy was 83,000 tons. Today, the largest ship is the 2009 MS Oasis of the Seas, another cruise ship. It sits at five times the size of Titanic, 200 25,000 tons. There have been recent cruise ship disasters. In 2011, the Carnival Splendor experienced an engine fire and was stranded for days. In 2013, the Carnival cruise ship Triumph stalled at the seas with no power again for days. It became nothing more than a floating toilet. Speaking of poo, the Royal Caribbean cruise ship Vision of the Seas came down with a nasty gastrointestinal virus that spread throughout the ship, causing explosive diarrhea and vomiting among the inhabitants. If it was just a series of ships covered in shit, that wouldn't be much to be concerned about. But in late 2013, the Italian cruise ship Costa Concordia capsized and sank after striking an underwater rock. The cowardly captain had diverted the ship from its course, causing the accident. He refused to help incapacitated passengers and was not the last to leave the ship, as is the captain's duty. He was found guilty of manslaughter of 32 passengers. A maritime disaster like this had not occurred since 2000. In 2015, a Chinese cruise ship, the Dongfei Jijing, was sunk during a storm on the Yangtze River. 442 people died. Only 12 survived. 14 million people ride on cruise ships annually. This is thankfully a small number of disasters, compared to the sheer volume of transport and entertainment commerce taking place. Ships nowadays have water slides into onboard Olympic-sized pools on their main deck. Cruise ships have steadily gotten taller and taller, looking like a precarious stack of pancakes. In an attempt to get back to the design of earlier times, An Australian billionaire is tempting fate by building what is now called the Titanic II, about half the size in tonnage and updated to current technology. The new ship of dreams will look like a replica of the old Titanic. The construction of the ship has been delayed. It will not set sail until as early as 2018, if it ever gets completed. Without reservation, and still with a healthy skepticism, I can't help but want to ride on that ship, the Titanic. We tempt fate and dare nature to conquer our technological hubris every day. But let's not forget that the lessons of the Titanic will always hang over every big engineering project that humans try to undertake. 
and we are better warned than absolute in how sure we are of ourselves. One Minute History with Cass and I on YouTube and the podcast can only be heard if you share this with friends, post it, and talk about it with others. To support One Minute History, please visit OneMinuteHistory.com. That is one, the digit one, minute history.com. For those uh, who have supported One Minute History, we thank you. Next week, we're going to be talking about Winston Churchill and what it's like to write a speech that actually inspires someone. For One Minute History, my name is Cassaniah. Good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow.